Hey everyone, and welcome to the video. I'm North Central, and we are back among the tombstones here at the Mount Zion Community Church and Cemetery, church being here behind us. Now in the last video uh, here at the Mount Zion, we pulled this headstone out of the ground. Uh, it had sunk all the way up to the very top here. This is the dirt line, only this top part was actually showing. The rest of it had sunk all the way down into the ground, all 42 inches of it. Um, we stumbled upon it and I uh, made a tripod, got a chain fall, dug around it a little bit, yanked it out, gave it a nice cleaning so we could uh, see some writing and stuff on it. Today, oh, well, if you haven't seen that video, then there's a link to it right up here. And I suggest you go back and watch part one of this video because this is part two. So here in part two, we're going to fill the hole back up with rock, bring it back up to level that it should be tamp it all back down with, with uh, fresh dirt and the grass and stuff that I took off around it. Tear the tripod down, give this thing a nice little D2 bath and stick a flag on it. That way we can honor the veteran like he's supposed to be. So don't go anywhere, stick around. So what I want to try and do is widen it out just a little bit. So it's, I don't want it to, I don't want to put the gravel down in there and have it just in a little four inch by 13 inch, you know, hole. Uh, I want to widen it out just a little bit. Uh, so it's maybe it's a uh, seven inch by 13 inch hole. Uh, that way it gives it like like more of a base, right? Because this is 220 pounds on just a little four inch thick, 13 inch base. So I want to try and give it a little more than that. This thing's going to be down. So this is one of my uh, flags without the flag on it, just the wooden shaft. It's 24 inches long. And so I want it to be about right here where I would normally put my tie wrap, right? That's about how deep I want this hole. So if I lay my shovel down, that's about where I want it to, right there where that hole is. So let's mark it there a little bit. See if I can't widen it out some. Lots and lots of roots. I hope I brought enough rock. And this is this is river rock. So pea gravel is, of course, about the size of peas. River rock is a little bigger. And I want to use river rock because it's, well, because it's bigger. It'll act as more of a base, if that makes any sense. I think it's pretty close. just a 
little bit more in there, but I got these seven by seven blocks. I'm gonna try and set this thing on. two big rocks in there on either side of it. I'm not gonna be able to get those in there. It's just gonna be sitting on what I didn't want it to do. It's gonna be sitting on this river rock at about that height. That's okay, the river rock will keep it from going down too, too far. But definitely gonna need some more. That's gonna be real close right there, guys. It's gonna be real close. All right, let's get this thing back in the hole. Got a lot of dirt with it. Gonna clean the hole out just a little bit. Got a lot of dirt in it. Move this out of the way.
good. Alright guys, I'm going to take a short break, 
because it's like 95 degrees out here and I'm sweating like a crazy. Get some water in me and uh, we'll get to cleaning this thing and uh, putting a flag on it. But I think it came out, I think it came out real nice. All right, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and wet the stone down. I like to wet it down prior to, to scrubbing it. And I like to keep it wet for about five to 10 minutes. Just helps loosen things off. Dirt, grime, biologics, whatever. We can go ahead and make up some more of this paste. I generally use about a gallon of water. I do a, a two finger on the Orvis paste to see if it's about the right amount. And of course, I always use a natural fiber brush. This is, uh, the bristles are uh, made of Tampica from the Magadi plant. If you're thinking about doing something like this, you don't have to use Orvis paste. Most definitely, don't even have to use D2. Most of what you can do is just with water and a good scrub brush. I would recommend a natural fiber brush, but you can also use nylon bristle. So I'm gonna keep this thing wet. Like I said, it's about five, 10 minutes. And next time you see it, we'll be scrubbing. This right here, this was the only part that was showing through the ground. That was it. Now through the grass, this was the actual dirt line here, but the grass had, had, had overtaken it. And you could actually see the top of the cross. And I'll leave a link to uh, my pre pre-treatment with wet and forget when I did the cemetery. You'll see this stone, this this little section here. Like I said, you can only see this little section here. And now, now you can clearly make it out. That looks a lot nicer, a lot nicer. All right, so it's been about ten minutes. I'm gonna give this thing a, a good scrub down. back's really dirty I'm gonna bring the camera around all right guys that's what the back looks like but most of it's just mud
All right. I really appreciate it if you would help the channel out. If you're not already subscribed, please go right on up there and hit that subscribe button. Right next to it's a little tiny bell. Mash on that bell and select all notifications. Please give this video a thumbs up. And as always, go down to the comments and leave a nice little comment if you would. Smiley face, happy face, whatever. All that stuff really helps the algorithms of YouTube. It helps promote the channel. And all my, my YouTube videos are monetized. And it helps me with the money that I get from YouTube. What little money I get from YouTube. I put right back into doing stuff like this for these veterans in the cemetery. So I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for your support. So as always, after a nice little scrub, we're gonna give our veteran friend here a soak down in D2. Now, down here, there's probably not any biologics. All this here is just where it was in the ground, the staining and stuff, and hopefully that will come out in time. Now up here, this is biological stuff, but I'm gonna go ahead and spray the entire stone. You know, you just never know. So here we go. As always, we're not complete until we can give him a proper flag and holder. My holders I get in sticks of 10 foot. It's schedule 40 pipe, uh, plastic PVC. I cut it into 15 inch lengths, which gives me eight per stick. And then of course I coat it green so that it hides a little bit in the grass. I know it's not the exact color, but it'll do for now. Of course, I use a standard 8x12 gray flag, 24 inch shank, and I come up four or five inches on the shank, and you put a, a, tie, a, a zip tie that way. When you stick it in the holder, it stands up pretty nice and straight. The flag doesn't touch the ground, it's not going to come out. And I always put it on the left side facing the stone. This is the front of the stone, so here it is on the left side, and you can see up here. You see how it's turned yellow with the staining while well, it's killing the biologics on the stone notice down here that it's still the same color that, that nasty uh, uh kind of real light tannish color that's from the ground this will all die off and it will turn really really white while this will take much much longer um, hopefully this will actually seep out of the stone and this will uh, uh, turn a nice a nice marble white but this will be a lot whiter than this will be it's going to look a little odd for a little bit but what happens when these things go into the ground for a long time this thing's been in the ground for a long time but now it's out george alsay virginia trumpeteer 8th u.s cavalry died october 11th 1918 ready for memorial day all right guys that's another stone down for the books and i gotta say it looks pretty good i hope you enjoyed the video and i will see you next time Thanks for watching.